If you enjoy my videos, please check out my website at creationsciencefiction.com where you'll find articles on creationism, science, and my blog. If you really enjoy what I'm doing, please consider becoming a contributor at the link in the video description. In this video, we're going to look at a creationist training video on how and why to use Piltdown Man when arguing about evolution. I was looking through the Genesis Apologetics YouTube channel and found this gem. It's put out by something called the International Association for Creation. I wasn't familiar with the organization, so I checked him out and found out that Eric Hovind is the president and executive director. It really doesn't surprise me because Eric seems to have his hands in a lot of cookie jars these days, but let's check out their training video. This here is a replica of the Piltdown skull that was first brought to scientific light in 1912 by a man named Charles Dawson. And as you probably know, Piltdown Man was one of the most famous scientific frauds in history. Piltdown Man was nothing more than a human cranium and an orangutan jaw that had both been stained to look like they were old fossils. The dark parts of this particular replica are what was actually discovered. The white was all imagined by the scientists. And this particular find was accepted by the scientific community in Britain at the time as being a half human, half ape transition. Hundreds of books and papers were published on this skull explaining that it was a transition between an ape and a human, but later it turned out to be a complete hoax. What he's saying here is for the most part accurate, but what's important to remember is that Piltdown Man was not a hoax perpetrated by scientists, but one created by an amateur paleontologist against the scientific community. It has taught us some valuable lessons though, and we'll get to that in a minute. This is The Antiquity of Man, written by Sir Arthur Keith, who is one of the primary experts on Piltdown Man. As you can see on the cover here, we have Piltdown Man embossed in gold. And if you open up the book, you can see very detailed measurements and detailed drawings of the Piltdown skull, describing it in scientific terms. And it's just interesting to see because when we look back on it now, we know that it was a complete hoax. But the scientists at the time really did believe it was a real missing link between apes and humans. It wasn't until later in 1953 when the scientific community eventually rejected Piltdown Man because they recognized that it was a hoax. British anthropologists and many in the British scientific community at the time were very dismayed at the fossil evidence for early man coming from Asia and Africa. Piltdown Man was a source of, of national pride for those who fell for the hoax, but it wasn't widely accepted in the international community. My copy of Historical Geology by Carl Dunbar, originally published in 1915, confirms this. Piltdown Man was only mentioned once in a chart, while fossil hominids from Asia and Africa, like Australopithecus uh, Africanus and Homo erectus were discussed in much detail and pages were dedicated to them. And the main way you can use Piltdown Man when talking about the origins of humans is to point out that scientists are human. Scientists can be fooled and the easiest way to fool a scientist is to show them something that they're expecting to see. And that was certainly the case with Piltdown Man. British scientists at the time seemed to be jealous of scientists in Germany because there was a skull discovered in Germany called Heidelberg Man and it was claimed to be an early human. Now the British wanted their own transitional fossil to show that humans had actually come from Britain. So when Piltdown Man came on the scene, it was exactly what they were expecting to see. And so they were fooled into thinking that it was a real ape to human transition. Once again, what he's saying here is really not inaccurate. And when Piltdown Man was named as a hoax, it was probably bigger news than its discovery. The problem I have with what he's saying is why he's saying it, and that becomes apparent in the next clip. Now that mistake was eventually corrected, although it took about 40 years for it to happen. But today it stands as a warning to scientists that they can be fooled into seeing what their minds are expecting to see. So when we look at other fossils like Lucy, we need to take that into consideration that our beliefs shape how we interpret the evidence. 
so you see, the reason that they're bringing up Piltdown Man all the time is to try to cast doubt on real important finds like Lucy and other transitional species. I suppose we could start bringing up more recent hoaxes like Ken Ham's fake Ark. Or how about Erie Baby, a supposed Lake Erie monster that Carl Bow purchased from a taxidermist in Ohio and once promoted as a living dinosaur. Even Kent Hovind promoted this hoax. It seems that Piltdown Man and his brother, Nebraska Man, are the main focus of creationist arguments still. In my debate with Kent Hovind, I brought up all this evidence for human evolution, modern evidence going back three and a half million years, and all he really wanted to talk about was Piltdown Man and Nebraska Man. Nebraska Man is like the young earth creationist superhero. <laughs> I, I found a uh, video on Nebraska Man on the Genesis Apologetics site too, so here's a short clip from that one. Have you ever heard of Nebraska Man? Nebraska Man was the first American ape man fossil to be discovered, and Harold Cook found just a tooth. Huh. Bet that made for us some news on museum display. Yeah, well, it was big enough for the New York Times, okay? And then it went viral for back then, and the London News did a whole drawing on it from a single tooth. There's still a picture of him on Wikipedia. They drew all that based on a tooth? Yeah, an artist hired by the news agency did, not a scientist. Even Wikipedia will tell you that. Yeah, but ten years later they discovered out that that tooth was actually from an extinct pig. No way. Yeah, so Piltdown Man was the popular proof for evolution for 40 years, and Nebraska Man was the popular proof for 10. Nebraska Man was never accepted by the scientific community, and it was renounced just a few years after it was first announced. You know, what if every single time a creationist brought up the miracle, like something associated with Noah's Flood, we just brought up this guy? God has used Reverend Peter Popov throughout his entire life and ministry to bring miraculous deliverance to hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Look at that man go! Jesus made you dance like that. Yeah! Yes! That would be pretty embarrassing, wouldn't it? But see, I'd rather argue the actual evidence. And it appears that young earth creationists, instead of arguing the actual evidence, are training people to dwell on people's past failures.